hello everyone and welcome welcome back to my channel how are you guys doing i hope you're really really doing well let me just make sure i'm repositioning this properly so as you can see i'm at work and i am on my break we had a little bit of a longer break so i still have some time left and i was just sitting here and i thought hmm i could just make a youtube video a really quick one related to my job today and what i'm doing so today i will be telling you guys about the responsibilities of an icu nurse what you're expected to do and what you may end up doing during your normal shift so let's get started For an ICU nurse, there are so, so, so many responsibilities and all I'm going to be doing today is to give you guys just a summary, just an overview. So for people who are interested, because I honestly get a lot of messages, especially after I did the video with Nanel, there are people who are really, really interested in coming to work in the UK and they just want to know what's going on in ICU, what will I be doing? So let's get started. Number one, you will be responsible for assessing, monitoring and evaluating your patients okay so assessing will start from basically like doing a, an examination or a patient assessment head to toe or using abcde uh, you will be doing observations like i've mentioned in a few of my videos we do our obs hourly because these are critically ill patients so we'll be doing the normal obs like blood pressure heart rate and all of that and then there are other different kinds of observations like for instance if you have a patient who is on uh, hemodialysis or filter as we call it here you need to put those observations in the chat as well if your patient is on invasive cardiac monitoring you will have to chat that as well there are patients who come here and they are on like pca or they have epidural so for epidural especially you will have to do four hourly obs for the bromwich scale to check the neuromuscular block for patients who come up and they've had procedures maybe in ir where you have to check the pulses to make sure that things are still going on really well so things like that okay and then it's also your responsibility to evaluate your patient and take necessary action like inform the doctors if you see something is wrong number two you will be responsible to check the limits or the alarm limits for your patients monitoring so these are limits like on the monitor which is giving you the blood pressure we have different targets some patients will need like normal tensi which is map of 65 others will need to have maybe a uh, given systolic blood pressure of 140 to 160 so it's your responsibility to make sure you set uh, the alarms on the monitor so in case it goes above or below that the monitor will alert you and you'll be able to act on that it's good to check after handover because there are some people who just decide to switch off the alarms which is a really bad thing and and you will do the same uh, on the ventilator as well so you can be informed if there is a change above or below the set targets by the doctor um, another thing is you will be responsible to talk to your patients explain what you're doing to them make sure they understand what's going on and this goes for the sedated patients as well as much as our patients will be sedated you will need to at least talk to them we still talk to them if i'm brushing their teeth i will tell them i'm brushing their teeth if i'm giving them medication i will say i'm giving you your medication this is supposed to do this and this for you another responsibility is obviously administering the medication and this is including the regular medication and the infusions as well so all you need to do is just check your drug chart and then you double check especially for cd drugs in my trust we don't need to double check every iv but there are trusts even if you're giving paracetamol iv you need to double check so make sure you do that and then you administer the medication if you're not sure how it's done you can check on medusa which gives you a clear guidance of how to give especially the iv drugs or you can confirm with the doctor the pharmacist or the other nurses in the bay as well so another responsibility you will be responsible for reviewing the labs and arterial blood gases as well so in itu we tend to do arterial blood gases for hourly or even more frequent depending on what you're monitoring or how sick the patient is and once you do that you're responsible to check the results Results, do the adjustments on the ventilator or, or for the drugs as needed and if things like potassium are low you need to top that up if you're not sure what you need to do confirm with your nurse in charge or the deputy
to in the bay all the doctors as well and then during the day when the labs come back you need to go there and check things like magnesium or phosphate if you need to top up if something is out of order like crp is rising or anything just tell the doctors if you're monitoring for drug levels like vancomycin just check and make sure it's within the policy because if if it's higher or lower than the target then you need to tell the doctors to adjust the prescription so you can change the infusion so another thing is working together with the members of the multidisciplinary team okay so like i said so many times icu is teamwork and you cannot do this alone you will be working together with the doctors with people like physio dietitian salt teams not nurses if uh, you get to that point pain team other specialists like cardiac or neuro you will need to talk to them give them feedback if you have any questions regarding your patient's care that they can help then you just contact them and then you guys will discuss and make sure that this patient is getting the best care possible um, another responsibility you have is to recognize the changes especially for deteriorating patients you are expected to know the norms for the patient and if you see something out of order then it's your responsibility to take action on that and that could be as simple as calling for help you don't need to know everything but you just need to know when to call for help and then something else related to that is to be able to respond to emergency situations just show up and help as much as you can something else that you are responsible for is taking your patients for procedures outside of the unit so we have things like MRI which are scheduled on specific days we have things like CTs which can be scheduled or they can happen in emergency situations for theater as well down to IR for other procedures but you cannot transfer the patient if you are not transfer trained and in my trust you can't transfer the patient if you haven't been signed off and done the ILS so until you get to that point then you will be helping to prepare your patient for transfer and then you hand over to the person who is transfer trained so they can take down your patient if you have like a level 3 patient you will be going down with the doctor if it's a more stable patient level 2 level 1 then you can just need to call the porter to help you wheel the patient down and then you go for the scan um, another important thing that is your responsibility is giving feedback to the family and supporting them in every way you can so here you're taking care of really really sick people who have relatives or loved ones who care about them and the moment people hear their loved one has been taken to icu they just start imagining of the worst things possible so it's your responsibility to keep updating them get them help if they need a uh, psychological help or emotional help we have so many facilities in the hospitals in this country so you just need to connect them with those kind of people so they are able to help them and for you as well you can just be reassuring them tell them that they are able to call for updates at any time especially now that we have visitors restrictions because of the COVID situation that we had so just make sure that they know what's going on with their loved ones um, something else that I almost forgot is documentation you guys know about documentation you will be writing your notes you'll be updating the chat everything you know if you haven't documented it then you didn't do it so everything you do everything that happens make sure you document it in my trust we do all our documentation on the computer there are others who do paperwork where you have to write down everything they have charts and everything is in place so make sure you follow the policies as per the trust that you're working the last thing I'm gonna talk about is induction and helping the new staff who are just coming to the unit it can be really really scary I remember when I started started here first i wanted to run away and go back to the nursing home where i was very comfortable so it can be really scary i've had some people quit someone actually just messaged me the other day they had a really really bad experience and they decided to quit and go back to the ward which makes me feel so so bad but if you're there and you know what you went through just try and guide someone try and make it easy for them try and tell people that you're open for them to come and talk to you anytime that they need or they feel they need support so that would be really really helpful and that's all i can think about now guys i think i should be going back in the next five minutes so thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next video bye good night